Hey, happy Tuesday, everybody. Mark again here, Weatherman Plus. Now, we have three storms coming back to back to back. Two of them is going to the upper Midwest, bringing severe weather, and severe weather will be coming to the south. The third one is going to the south, bringing a lot of heavy rainfall and severe weather as well. If you've never been here before, make sure you subscribe. I am all year long. Timestamps are below for those that can't watch the video all the way through. We all have lives. We all are busy. We also have another Arctic blast coming through, and that's going to cause more very cold temperatures coming through once again in April. And you can see the storms hit in Oregon and California already. It's bringing heavy rainfall, but it is bringing heavy snowpack, and it's going to put you all well above the line. It's really, I believe, going to be a little rough on the flooding when spring comes around and all this melts. Now, there is a difference in the snowfall ratings, and I will show you which one is true and which one is not true. I have your snowfall in this forecast. Now, remember, time and date is always above my head, but you can see with Vorticity, as this system comes by California, it does come to our center of the U.S., bringing our severe weather for Friday. Still have the big event happening for Friday. is still very strong, guys. But then we have another one coming in, next week going towards the upper midwest and it will strengthen up as you go through tuesday and wednesday bringing more severe weather even to the south but then we're going to have a cutoff low after that and it gets a subtropical jet while we get some warm temperatures on the west coast it's going to go back and forth for you guys but this cutoff low is going to ride the subtropical jet and come to the south as you go through the 8th through the 10th of april this is going to go all the way to the south and bring storms and heavy flooding for y'all as well so there's multiple <laughs> systems coming our way that we need to prepare for now for northern california national weather service has put this out in this area for central to northern along the coast that you could have rates of half an inch per hour for a very short period and get totals of an inch and a half to three inches of rainfall coming down now, as of this morning, the new information for California is that you have extreme impacts coming your way. That's what all the purple represents. And this will be in the Sierra Nevada due to blowing snow, the snow load, and the snow amounts up to four feet. I'm still showing possibility of five feet or more for Northern California. But so far, they have snowfall for two to four feet above 6,000 feet level. Total snow of one to three feet for 5,000 to 6,000 feet. 6 to 12 inches from 4,000 to 5,000. This is all the way from this morning all the way until 11 o'clock for tomorrow. But you can also see here on the snowfall forecast, they're still showing potential chances of 5 feet of snow for the last in part. But a lot of people is going to get 3 to 4 feet. And as you go further to the south, it's more like 1.5 to 2, maybe 3 feet of snow. Still a lot of snowpack coming, adding up to all the snow you have already. Now you can see a little closer here that you do have them storms in the southeast for today and it has modeled it down. There was chances for tornadoes. That has gone away. But once the system fully comes in, it will go through the upper Midwest, bringing our severe weather we still have for Friday. And it is still showing cyclogenesis, a strengthening low pressure. But we still, after we go next week, we got another one coming right in from Tuesday through Thursday Another big event of severe weather coming with that next system as well before we even get that third one coming in. So it's just going to be back to back to back. And you can see how strong that next system is just by looking at your lightning strikes. You can see for this first system coming in through Friday is bringing a lot of lightning. Even with all that white that's indicative to large hail coming with the system as we go through Friday. All Friday evening. Just a long night of a lot of thunderstorms, a lot of booming going on with this system. And then when that next one comes in, it's going to be big as well. It's going all the way up towards Canada with these storms. Right around Tuesday and Wednesday, you got storms going all the way up towards Minnesota. Still chances for large hail and those as well. A lot of lightning strikes. But look how it just spreads out all across Louisiana, all the way up towards Minnesota. A big ridge coming with a lot of severe weather on that one as well. As you go through Wednesday, you might even get a squall line appearing as we get another surface low strengthening almost in the same area. Bringing storms Wednesday across as well, and that is going to affect the south. A lot of lightning strikes, chances for large hail on this second system. Now this first system, there isn't going to be a cap. It is going to be a lot of strong storms. You can see as you go overnight, you get your daytime heating, there's your temperatures. As you go overnight, you will have a lot of warm temperatures down below, and that is going to 
not have a cap if you have cooler temperatures aloft instead of warmer temperatures as that moves in and brings your snowfall. But you have a lot of warmer temperatures on the ground level. And when you look at your lower level temperatures, you can see that you have a lot cooler temperatures aloft. So there won't be a cap on this severe weather event that we have coming this Friday. It will be cooler temperatures aloft, so it will be a nasty storm system. There will not be a cap. There's no telling how bad this really will get until we get a little bit closer, guys. But you also can see that in the beginning of April that we do have a cool front coming down, bringing some cold temperatures all the way down by the 3rd through the 5th. Some very cold temperatures coming down towards the South Central, Upper Midwest. All y'all going to be in very cold temperatures, I will show you. And it will swing to the Southeast and the Northeast as you go through the 6th. Then before we get that third system, you see how we warm up towards the west coast. We get a nice spike of warm temperatures going all the way to the west coast, but it don't last long. Go with that third system, that cutoff low that goes in the subtropical jet, comes across the southwest, and that brings cooler temperatures all down the west coast. And then that one moves in as well. And then we get warm temperatures going all the way up to Canada while we're getting cooler temperatures on the east coast now we still have our severe weather outlook for friday a big 15 percent and we still have our big 30 percent enhanced section here's your cities and states down below at the same time when you look at your cape your instability you see as you go through thursday and friday we still have a lot of strong lift going all the way up towards iowa then it weakens down as it goes by wisconsin and illinois as it goes for the rest of the day into Saturday. But still some strong lift with this first system. Then our second system comes in next week. And as you go through Sunday all the way till Tuesday, you have very strong lift. Stronger cape than what we're dealing with on this first system. And as that passes, it just stays for days. A lot of strong lift coming with it. And we're talking some high numbers, guys. Getting over 3,000 joules over 3,000 joules, a lot of instability coming in the south with that second system all the way from Monday to Wednesday. But the second one is definitely showing a lot more strength than the first one that we're dealing with on Friday, and that's already at an enhanced level. Look at the difference between this one and the next setup that we have. A lot stronger. We're even getting some reds in there. There's a lot of strong setup coming very soon. And you can see the same shot here on SIPS. Now, it tends to overdo it a little bit, but it's pretty close to what comes out. And you can see the severe weather that is predicted by them as well on this first system. It's almost a match. And it shows that the biggest chance for tornadoes as we go through Friday actually is the strongest for northeastern Arkansas, western Tennessee, northern Mississippi, southeastern Missouri, and southern Illinois. It's showing us the biggest threat, biggest chance for tornadoes and it also shows that when that second system comes in there will be somewhat an enhanced section and a slight risk a 10 percent and a 15 percent further to the south that's coming with that second system so it's showing a little further ahead of what we can see with national weather service take this with a grain of salt this model does overdo it a little bit but it's pretty accurate most of the time it did get friday's intensity pretty close and it's showing that we have a good chance for that second storm to be just as intense further to the south. And this is right around April 4th and April 5th. And GFS is showing that the wind gusts will pick up towards 50 and 60 as you go through Thursday. And it will go through 50 and 60 again as you go through Friday, Saturday, out through the northeast on Sunday. And I will show you why I'm showing you GFS. Because that is what Weather Prediction Center is going by on the snowfall ratings, guys. So Thursday is going to the four corners, bringing 50 and 60 miles per hour wind gusts. As you go through Friday, it starts intensifying immediately towards 50 miles per hour wind gusts into 60 all across the Ohio Valley. And you can see that shot a little better here. So as you go into Friday afternoon, a lot of high winds into Saturday going off through the northeast a big area of damage and winds and as you go through saturday it will reach through the northeast as well still bringing 50 and 60 and getting some of 70 offshore so it's still going to be cyclogenesis It's still going to be a strengthening low pressure bringing a lot of impacts to the whole country guys look how big of an area this is covering 
with very high winds, not 40s and 50s. This is 50s and 60s. And GFS has been consecutive. This is a 12Z. This is why I was waiting for this. This is the balloon data. They only do it twice a day, the 0Z and the 12Z. But you can see the 6Z and you can see the 12Z very consecutive with the GFS. You really need to prepare for these winds. Still showing is going to bring a lot of snowfall. You see how much further north it has gone. Way different than what the, the Euro is showing. And I will show you where the prediction center says. And as that second system comes in, as we get to cold air in the beginning of April, more potential heavy snowfall almost in the same area. All that pink is over a foot. And when you get to the blue, you're getting towards two feet of snow. So it overdoes it a little bit. GFS does. But the impacts are pretty accurate on where it's going. Just a little bit heavy. But you also see the update with the Canadian. It is a green with the GFS. And if you take a look at the Euro, the Euro is showing way different information that is going to be a lot of snowfall for southern Wisconsin as well, all over Michigan. And the heaviness is moving way east. So the Canadian and the GFS are agreeing with each other. Euro is the only one that's showing something different. I know Euro is a good model. But GFS saw the foot of snow that came with the last system before Euro saw it, then Euro corrected itself. So GFS is pretty good as well. And if you take a look at Weather Prediction Center, you can see by Friday, we're going to have that strong surface low building up over Nebraska towards Iowa while you're starting to get that snowfall. And as you go through Saturday, it goes up on that high ridge, bringing rain towards Michigan, not all that snowfall. So it is going up on that high ridge. And that is agreeing with the GFS. So you can see all the heavy snowpack that's coming to California, even got some coming for Nevada as well. But as it goes through Wednesday and goes through the Rocky Mountains for Friday, it's going to come through Wisconsin, bring a little bit of snowfall, but then it's going to add up to a little bit more. Remember, it's that one, two bang on them storms in upper Midwest. And look how much higher of a ridge it is taking. So South Dakota, Minnesota, probably right towards Minneapolis, towards northern Wisconsin and upstate Michigan. Y'all look like y'all going to be getting the heaviest snowpack anytime from Friday afternoon all the way till Saturday morning. A lot of snowfall coming y'all way. So Friday morning, you are going to have some snow on the ground, but once it goes into Friday evening when that system comes in, bringing all that precipitation into the cold temperatures, that's when it's bringing your foot of snow. A lot of snowfall still coming with this first system. And so far, that second system is going in the same tracks, bringing a lot of heavy snowfall with it. We still have cold air coming in, and that is going to play a big part. All the way from Colorado, all the way to upstate Michigan, well into Canada, bringing you almost two feet of snow into Canada. And you can see that shot here from Weather Prediction Center. So your risk of heavy snow all the way from April 4th all the way to April 10th is in this purple section that is on that second system so it's definitely agreeing with the gfs on that heavy snowfall coming guys potentially a foot or more plus when you look at your arctic isolation see what's going on with the cold air you can see with the gfs in the red canadian in the green euro in the blue they are all in agreement that we have another deep dip of cold air coming in, in the beginning of april matter of fact you can see here on gfs it has seen it for a minute the previous runs is all these colors that you see. This is the previous run showing that cold air coming in. It went a day later on the update, but you still see we have cold air coming in. And the six looks like the deepest so far, the coldest air coming in. At the same time, when you look at your tropopause up air aloft, you can see the cold anomaly coming in with this first system. And as it goes up through the upper Midwest, you can see how it bringing all that severe weather with it and the cold temperatures bringing y'all that heavy snowfall. Then we got that second system coming and you can see the cold air coming at the beginning of April, all that purple. It's a lot colder temperatures, I will show you. That's going towards the upper Midwest and that's why you're getting such a heavy snowpack out of that second system. Then that third one comes in, cut off low, comes into the subtropical jet and you can see all the warm temperatures going way up towards Canada as that brings severe weather towards the south, bringing y'all a lot of chances for flooding as well. But look at the warm temperatures going all the way up towards Canada 
on that third one coming. So as you go through April 4th and April 5th, Tuesday and Wednesday, this is where the coldest is. And so far it's coming all the way towards the south. Texas is going to be in the 40s, but Panhandle of Texas could see freezing conditions where everyone else is in 20s, even got some single digits for the upper Midwest. Then as you go through Thursday, it moves a little bit further to the east. It don't affect the southeast too much. It puts y'all in the 40s, but it does bring cooler temperatures for the upper Midwest and the intercoastal northeast. Then as we get that third one, you see how you get all these warm temperatures build up, but they're going to build up on the west coast as you go towards the 9th and the 10th of April. A lot of warm temperatures coming to the west coast. So there is going to be a lot of warm temperatures coming in, even going all the way towards Canada as you go through the 10th and 11th. You got some 50s and 60s going all the way up towards Canada. A very extreme pattern coming soon. But at the same time, it is bringing cold wind chills. So as you go through the morning of the 5th on next Wednesday, you're going to feel like you're in the 20s for the panel of Texas. A lot of the central U.S., Ohio Valley, going to feel like you're in the 20s. For the upper Midwest, you're going to feel like you're in the teens, the single digits, even the negative wind chills coming towards North Dakota. And as you keep on going, you can see the wind chills do carry a little bit further to the east. A lot of strong cold temperatures coming for the Ohio Valley, the upper Midwest, and the intercoastal northeast with a slight difference all the way into the south. And then once you get that warm up, it is going to be a big warm up going all the way from the west coast all the way into Canada. Very warm temperatures coming your way. Then maybe some cold temperatures coming right back after that. But you can see here from Weather Prediction Center that from the 4th through the 10th, as we get that second system and that cutoff low, that third system, that you have a slight risk all the way up towards Michigan, all the way to the Gulf for flash flooding, heavy precipitation. But from the 4th through the 6th, you have a moderate level all the way from the deep south all the way to the Ohio Valley. But you see, once again, as we go through the third and fourth, we get another system in the upper Midwest. We get a second one in the upper Midwest. This is bringing all these storms and the potential for that flash flooding, all that heavy rainfall coming. Then we get that cutoff low, and that comes in all the way to the 10th. You get another system in the upper Midwest, bringing severe weather, bringing a lot of storms. And then that system comes all the way to the south, bringing the storms and the precipitation in y'all direction as well. So we are definitely going into a strong April, guys. March is going out like a lion, and April is coming in like a lion, not a lamb. It is going to be a strong start to April. So when those storms come in from the 4th through the 8th, you can see how it brings a heavy precipitation to the south all the way up towards the Ohio Valley, but really right here from the Tennessee, Kentucky, north side of the deep south. Then as you get that cutoff low, and that adds up to more rainfall, just like it had all the way to the 10th for heavy precipitation. Now you see it goes all the way up, but you got a really hot spot right here for the deep south right where the weather the prediction has it for moderate rainfall. And it's too far to be sure, but it could be bringing anywhere from four inches plus, guys. A lot of precipitation coming and training in the same areas over and over. Now let's pick our winner for our solar weather station for today. FW Hunt, congratulations, you are the winner of the Solar Weather Station. Make sure you contact me at this email, weathermanplustoday at gmail.com. That way I can get it out to you as soon as possible. Weatherman. Can't be no simpler than that. Thank you so much for your support. God bless you, Hunt. I hope that you do like it. Now, I will keep you updated on these storms as they come along. I figure I did a video and show you what pattern we're going into because it's going to be one after another, guys. So thank you so much for visiting my channel. God bless you and your families. And I pray that y'all go with happiness today. A lot of joy. I don't like to bring any kind of doom and gloom in my videos. Today I want to talk to you about Romans 15, 13, and 14. Now the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, that ye may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost. And I myself also am persuaded of you, my brethren, that ye also are full of goodness, filled with all knowledge, able also to admonish one another. Amen. God bless you. I wish the best for each single one of you in your lives. The highest that you can get from God, the most you can get from God, because all God wants to give you is his best. Amen. 
And remember, all glory always goes to God, our Father in heaven, Yahweh. And may he always keep y'all safe every day of your life, you and your families, forever. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Have a great day, everyone.